Today we are doing a rebuild with one, two, three, four, five, five stars on every single player. That means every player we bring in into this into the 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 into this rebuild has to have five star weak foot or five star skill moves. That has to be one of the silliest intros I've ever done. Let me show you which team we're gonna do this with. I mean, you can kind of tell. It's Swansea. So looking through the entire team of Swansea City, we have one person, the captain, with the five-star weak foot. So he's eligible to, el eligible to play. Can I speak English today? Oh, wow. We only have him. Is that it? That's literally it. Wow. Okay. Well, guys, we have one player that is eligible, which means every single other player has to go. Matt Grimes will possibly be the only survivor of this rebuild. We are in the championship with Swansea City. We have 8 million to spend. That is not a lot of money. And ideally, I want to spend at least two seasons in a championship to build up a team that can compete in here and then compete in the Premier League as well. A bunch of new players are about to come in. But before I do so, I need to sell basically everyone. So after selling the entire squad, basically, we are up to 26 millionists with 200k in a wage budget. Guys, by the way, I would love to know in the comments down below, what do you think about FIFA 23? Do you think that career mode is going to get some massive improvements for FIFA 23 or not? Something in me tells me that it's not going to be massive. I feel like it's going to cause it's going to be cosmetic stuff that no one really cares about that doesn't really have an impact on the game. At least that's what my brain is telling me, but I'm praying, I'm hoping that I'm completely wrong on this one. Please EA, do the right thing and push career mode onwards even more. And I'm actually excited to see what EA is going to do with FIFA or the football game after they lose the rights to the name FIFA and being tied to it, being restricted by it. Do we think that FIFA career mode or career mode in general could from that point on become an even better game mode, more detailed and so many more new things added into the game because EA then technically are more free to do things that they want. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Guys, I just spent so much time going through transfers, researching who I could bring in, who I needed to sell, all of that. Let me show you right now. First of all, let's go through the players we have sold. We have let go of Smith, Manning, Danda, Fulton, Lati Baudier. Wow, I can't believe I actually read that. Um, Piro is leaving. Bennett is leaving. Piro, I believe, had a decent season last year for uh, this squad as well. Isn't he like a PSV Eindhoven X player or something like that? Anyways, Obafenemi, Bennett, Cabango, Nottin, all these guys have left. Now, let's take a look at the players that are coming into the team. So let's sort it that way and let's start off with the fun. Tayo Koga. A lot of people have no clue who the hell this guy is. But through my watching J-League time that I'm going through right now, I have found out that this guy is apparently one of the best under-23 progressive centre-backs in world football, which is just crazy. Just statistically speaking, he is very good with being a progressive centre-back. Tayo Koga comes into the team right now. He has a five-star weak foot. Tetera, a new goalkeeper. Five-star weak foot. Branth Waite, new centre-back. I'm going to play three at the back and play a very offensive team for this one. Branth Waite comes in. Five-star weak foot. Morais, a player I've never heard of. Very excited. Only 17 years old. 65 rated, I believe. Is now our new striker. Talis Magno, five-star skiller. This guy is just crazy. He's having such a good season in the MLS. It's his first season for New York City. And the guy's just nuts. He's their best player. Amuzu coming into our team. A very talented player for RSC Andalest as well. From Romania, we have brought in Skreciu. And another one, where is he? Olaru. Those two are coming in from Romania. Both of them five-star weak foot. Michel van Bergen and also Grul coming into the team as well. So all this we have gone through to put together an entire new team for Swansea. And we're going to be playing in this hella weird formation, which is the 3-4-3. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, a lot of times when we go through rebuilds, you see me bringing in players and then we take them to insane ratings. Just because I've gone ahead and bought a whole new team now, that does not mean 
I'm going to be able to hold on to these guys forever. Because if we get into Premier League and we get some cash, oh boy, I'm ready to make some upgrades. You can tell a lot of these guys are low rated. 65, 69, 67, 68, 67, 65 right there. Even though, hold on a second. There he is. Tetera is coming in with the 68 as well. So now every single person you see has a five-star weak foot or five-star skills. The five-star skillers are extremely expensive, so we're going to see more of them come in later on. For now, we are somewhat relying on the five-star weak foot. Hey, I nearly forgot about this one. We have a Youth Academy talent who's going to kick it off for us. Taylor Fuller, 68 rated. I didn't do anything. Five-star skill moves, lads. That's perfect. He goes straight into our team. I wish I saw that earlier, so I didn't buy Thiago Moraes, but... That Moraes kid still excites me a lot. So we're going to keep both of these guys and see who does better over time. Of course, the Youth Academy talent is going to do better. But I feel like we can probably use him to, you know, make some good profits in the future. But for now, he's coming in at a rating that is clearly okay. As you guys know, we have a policy of dropping the Youth Academy talent. Three ratings below the highest rated player. The highest rated is a 74, so we don't have to do that at all. He's going to just remain natural. 68 rated. That's fine. Oh, okay. So he gets a plus five everywhere else. Um, You know what? That's a tough one now. I have no idea what to do with this kid because I wanted to play Thiago Moraes. He's a 17-year-old talent that I've never used before. Ah, I hate when this happens. The first season is about to come to an end, and I'm seeing a bunch of wins right there at the end, but I'd be very happy if we were anything more than just a mid-table team. I'll be honest with you guys. Where are we? We are in the 12th position. That's pretty much smack down the middle, isn't it? Yeah, 24 teams. We are in that 12th position. That is fine with me. I don't want to go up into the Prem yet. We are not ready for that, and you can tell by the points needed, we are far off it. I'd be very surprised if we are in contention in the next season. But having said that, I'm very, very happy with how things are going here. Now, Moraes and Fuller have been fighting for that spot. We'll see in a second who has won that battle. Just for the sake of this, I didn't change his position. I just kept it the same way and I kept him unbalanced so that Moraes could catch up with the development plans to the same rating as Fuller. So we have a proper fight going on between those two. Van Bergen, though... 76 rated. That's incredible. Talis Magno has gone up to a 74. Grul up to a 75. Grimes, 76. Olaru, the Romanian, up to a 78. And his stats look amazing, by the way. I'm excited to try out these players. Amuzo on that right midfield position with 33 defending. He's definitely not helping out at the back. Koga, Screciu, and also Branthwaite, all above the 70, which is lovely. Same goes for the goalkeeper. So we have done somewhat well here for the first season clearly improved the squad and uh brought in the players that went that needed to come in oh okay that's the issue i tried to sell this guy on for a long time it just didn't work out patterson has gone ahead and gotten himself a 22 and 6 season hopefully we can sell him on for a decent amount next season morais with the 10 in 1 olaru 8 and 5 talis magno 8 and 3 and fuller coming in with the 3 and 2 i wonder why morais is so unhappy though like I don't... Oh, he submitted a transfer request. Lad, you played 30 plus games. Oh, I hate this, man. I, I genuinely wish there was an option to have career mode in a way where you are mainly focused on simulation and you can just get rid of all the contractual issues with these players. It, it just... Ah, man. Okay. I guess Moraes will go and we'll have to focus on Fuller from this point on. I'm pretty happy with how the season has gone. I expect a lot more in the next season. I'm going to keep a, keep tabs on Morais though. Maybe I get him back at some point. Well, I still have 8 million to spend left in this transfer window. But as I mentioned before, Morais had to go. And I brought in another center back to bring in a little bit of a little bit more competition into this team. And sadly, Tayo Koga will have to go down to the bench. He's the one with the longest time left on his development plans. So Chust from Real Madrid takes over our centre-back position. Five-star week for Moraes and Patterson have gone. And now I'm pretty happy with how this team is looking for a championship season. With the 8 million that I have, you know what? 
I could use Fuller and spend the 8 million on top of it to bring in an actual real life striker. I want to do that. You can do it! So now, you still see the striker in here, but I have actually replaced him. Uh, I'm going to sell Fuller later on and get Morais back. I have my plan with Morais. I want him here. But Jorginho Ruta is coming into the team now and I got him for an amazing price. He is coming in now for around 6.8 million or something and he's worth 8, so that's great. He comes into the squad as a left-footed, five-star weak foot player. A plus four upgrade upon what we had already. So I'm very happy with that. I'm going to sell Fuller, bring back more eyes. That's the plan. Let's see how the season ends. Well, would you look at that, my friends? We are currently looking at Millsbro in the playoffs. That means we're up for it. Premier League football. Is it going to happen? I would need it. I desperately do. Even though I didn't want to already... I might need it more than I thought. Norwich City is going to be the team in our way. We are coming in with the lads from Swansea in the championship. Finished in the third position. Only four points away from guaranteed promotion, which is amazing. The team itself is looking great. Look at that. 79, 79, 77, 81 rating on Olaru. He's looking so solid. Grul has gone up to a 79. The original Grimes is here with a 77. The defense has gone up massively, which is lovely. The goalkeeping position is the biggest issue. And there's only one goalkeeper I can really bring in. I'll show you guys later on if I do get enough money to buy him, obviously. That's going to be a big if. But if we make it into the Prem, that could be a reality very soon. But here it goes. Norwich City, can we get into the Prem? Please make it happen. Bang! Yes! All right, Talis Magno, Jorginho with the two goals, Ruta two goals, Talis Magno a goal as well. That is us going into the Premier League and that is us definitely buying a higher rated goalkeeper for the next season, but that might cost us the entire budget. Ruta, 23 and 3, Talis Magno, 20 and 6, Olaro, 17 and 6, Van Berge coming in again with a great season, only plus one this season around, that sucks. Amuso has done somewhat well, Grul has done well. And I'm, hey, I'm very happy with the season, guys. I am ready to take on Premier League teams. I am fully aware we won't be amazing in there, but I hope we can achieve the non-relegation. So the new season budget, Premier League money. Don't mind if I do. By the way, talking about Premier League money, guys, how do you feel about this whole transfer window madness that's going on for Manchester United right now? As I'm recording this, it's the 7th. And honestly, lads, I'm just hearing every single day. De Jong is joining. De Jong is not joining. De Jong would join, but Barcelona is owing him like 17 million in wages. I don't know what the hell is going on. And then there's Lisandro Martinez, who's supposed to join Arsenal, but then also supposed to join Manchester United. I'm just reading news that he's apparently decided where to go. I just don't know what the hell is going on at Manchester United. They need to get these transfers sorted out. Obviously, Ronaldo also. What's going to happen there? Is he going to Bayern Munich? Is he going to leave and go to Juventus? What is happening? This transfer window has been a madness and I love it. But um, I've just looked it up. Liverpool have just sold Nico Williams as well. And they have like brought in like 73 million and paid a total of like 80 something million in terms of transfers. It's actually crazy how well Liverpool do in terms of like recouping money with sales for players that just, just sat on the bench. It's unbelievable. But now that we have 37 million, it's time to bring in that goalkeeper that I want. And his name is Nubu. Five star weak foot. Let's freaking go. And Morais, you're coming back as a backup striker. I couldn't buy him last season. Because uh, Andalish didn't have enough players. After bringing in the goalkeeper in Nubu, we are now also going for a CDM in the name of Stach. Both Germans coming into our club. A five-star weak foot CDM. Not necessarily an upgrade, but an actual CDM this time. Grimes was a center mid. I wanted to bring in someone to help out the defense. So this man is going to be the one for us. He's only 24 years old at this stage. So should be fine with everything in this team. His stats are actually quality as well. So after all these uh, purchases that we have made, if we take a look at this right here, you can see we have let Grimes go and brought in Stach, a straight swap, which was great, and 21.8 million for Nubu, leaving us with around 15 million, which I'm going to keep just now because uh, the players are going to ask for insane wages now that we're in the Prem. Our first Premier League season is about to come to an end. Actually, hold on. To an end.
That's better. Now, lads, we are looking at a bunch of wins. A win against Manchester United, a win against Newcastle United, and 11. You know what? I'll take that. I'm very happy with that. A top eight finish next season is going to be the goal that we set ourselves. 50 points on a team, 64 scored, 59 conceded. Obviously, playing three at the back is quite offensive, especially if you have midfielders that don't help the defense at all. But it's fine because now everyone is above 80 except uh, Stach, the CDM. I'll have to probably fix that position. I was aware that it wasn't necessarily an upgrade or anything like that. I just wanted to see what a CDM can do for this team. And now looking at the stats here, Ritter, Magno, Olaru, all, and also Amuzu and Van Berge, all with over 10 goal contributions in our first season of the Prem. That's not too bad if you ask me. I'm very happy with that. And uh, yeah, like even the centre-backs are getting goals. Stach coming in with a 6.1. I'll probably have to go ahead and bring in a centre-mid that takes over that position and he's just higher rated. And there aren't many options left. I need big money to be able to sign some of these big, big players that have five-star skill moves or a five-star weak foot. For now, I'm pretty happy with how things are gone. Nice little progression for this season. But, of course... A little bit more cash always helps. More ice. Whoa. There he is, guys. I finally got him. Two seasons of Anderlecht not having enough players, so I could not sign him constantly, but he's now our backup striker. It's official. More ice is back. And on top of it, Dominguez is taking over that center midfield position. Yes, we'll have to go center midfield again. Not too many center defensive midfield options for us to bring into the team, especially high rated ones. So Dominguez has to be the one. He can defend, he can attack, he can do pretty much anything on the pitch that is required from him. So I'm very pleased with this signing. And just generally, we are looking at a very good team here that should or has to get top eight right damn right the question now is is there european football for swansea we beat tottenham leicester aston villa burnley wolves west ham that's a good end to the season ah only eight all right we'll take it that's 58 points 58 goals scored 43 conceded better defensive performance or actually better offensive i don't even know the goal difference is better than last time top eight though I did say I wanted to get top eight. Now, we need to get into European football as fast as possible. Now, we only have 19 million left here. What the hell? 700K in the wage budget? That's cool. Um, but yeah, looking at the team right now, you can kind of tell. We have brought in some players that are doing well. But in terms of five-star skills, I think so far, we've only been able to bring in one player, if I'm not mistaken, and that's Talis Magno. I want to bring in more five-star skillers into this team. It has to happen. It all depends on on the transfer budget though. Even a downgrade is possible. I want more five-star skillers. We're gonna get them. The defense is looking very good. I'm pretty happy with that. I hope these guys can keep going up in their stats and I'm pretty confident they can. And top eight is not too bad. I guess it's okay. Progress. You can kind of tell though why this season wasn't that good. Ritter 18 and one, Van Bergen 12 and seven. Yeah, it wasn't that good. The goals were really spread apart. We did it. We freaking did it. Marcus Rashford came in as a left wing, switched over to right wing. Van Bergen is gone. Five-star skiller is in the squad. And honestly, I would like to bring in someone else than Ruta as well, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be very hard to replace someone like him. Like players like Mbappe only come to mind when you think of five-star skilling forwards right now. But I'm definitely bringing in at least one more before we even get to that Champions League trophy, hopefully. At least I'll try to, because sometimes even a team like this can make it quite far. But luckily, we didn't qualify for anything in Europe, so all good. The season is done, but on top of it, guys, I've gone ahead and made one more transfer. Another five-star skiller is going to join us, and it's going to be in that right midfield position. You'll see it in a second. Now, in this month, we have a win against Chelsea, a win against Spurs, a draw against United, a loss against Liverpool. Top six is where I want to be. We are in the top four. Let's go. Champions League football secured. Even more money secured for the team. And the transfer I'm about to make, or the transfer that's about to come in in the new season, is going to be Ryan Cherky. This guy has been supposed to be a huge talent for years upon years now. And he's still only 22 in this career mode where we're at right now. But 
He has gotten injured plenty of times in real life. This season, he has been injured again, has been on and off on the pitch again. Just like Doku, both of these guys have been quite uh, have been going through a lot of injuries. But uh, he's going to come into our team and take over the position behind Marcus Rashford. Now, the team itself, Rashford up to an 87, which is great to see. Amuzo on an 85, so he's going to leave us. Just a heads up, Olaru 88, Ruta 89, Talis Magno, Krul, Dominguez on the 86, the entire defense on 86 and above. So there's nothing I can really complain about there. Very, very happy with the team's performance in this one. And the Champions League football is going to be quite helpful for us as well. So, goals-wise, oh, of course, the guy I'm letting go has the best season. That's cool. All right. <laughs> Well, that's going to be awkward. Well, in the new season, I got so much cash to spend. And I just got, got ahead and got myself Silas for the bench, Jota for the bench, and Vranks. Five-star weak foot, five-star skills, five-star skills. Seems like the three at the back formation is working. 2027, it might be about time. AC Milan, can you stop us? Semi-final. No, you cannot. Oh, PSG. Well, I am excited about that finale, my friends. This could be a special moment for our team as we step forward here. Did we win the league? Let's take a look at that first. Swansea has done it. Champions League final. League title winners. 84 points. And I got to tell you, halfway through the season, we were like fifth. So this is an amazing accomplishment. We were nine points behind the league leaders and the team wow okay yeah that team belongs into the champions league final ruta 91 talis magno 90 rashford 90 Cherky came in at like an 85 up to an 88 i think that's his potential olaru up to a 90 always had incredible stats on him dominguez with the 90 grul as well this is probably one of the biggest surprises to me didn't expect this guy to be one of the main men in this team but he has been improving every single season with no excuses. He's just been going up all the time. Chust is looking solid. Branthwaite is very good. And then we have Shkretsu coming in with the 90 as well. And Nubel as well. And on the bench, look at that. I have some solid players. Yep, I have some solid options on the bench. And Moraes could be a player that I do sub on. I'll let you know about that later on. But let's take a look if we actually had an outstanding season finally. Yes, we did. And I'm not talking about the team's performance. I'm talking about individual performances. We didn't have too many players get over 30 goal contributions. And now we have Rashford, Ruta, and Talis Magno, and Grul, all above 30. Well, I was about to say 40. Above 30 goal contributions. That is incredible. 39 for Grul, which is uh, probably the best performer this season. Very well done by him. The Austrian and then Olaru with the 14 and 11. Cherki with the 6 and 8. That's fine. Guys, this has been a joy. Now we get to hop into the Champions League final against PSG. I can't wait. And here we are on the day after. Your boy is ready. And I had to put on this shirt because on the other one, I spilled watermelon on it. Nice. It was a white shirt, as you guys know. So I'm very happy about the red you know, on the white shirt makes me feel amazing. By the way, I can't be the only one. When I eat something or I drink something and I spill it on my shirt, especially if it's like white, it ruins my day. My day is ruined. My day is ruined. Let me know if you guys are the same or am I just a nutter? Now, it is fun that we're playing against Kylian Mbappe here because Mbappe was one of the players that I wanted to bring in. Lacroix, Miguel. Let me see all them names. Edwards. Oh, Camara is there as the captain. Let's go. Kamara is one of the players that I believe in so much, man. I think he's going to do really well in the Premier League for Aston Villa. I'm just generally excited for Aston Villa with uh, Diego Carlos joining, Kamara joining. A lot of good players in there. But Edwards, going a little bit crazy here, mate. Calm down. Let's move it forward. Talis Magno on the left across to Marco Grul. Marco Grul. Let's cut inside, pal. Let's bring it inside. Ritter down the right. Marcus Rashford inside. Oh. Oh my God. What the hell? What the hell just happened? Let's move it. Rashford. Ruta. Yes, Ruta. Olaru. Romania. Romania. Let's go. This guy and his stats were incredible. 
always. He's also the captain. Oh, I didn't realize that. He must have gotten the captaincy after the original left the squad. That's a quality finish. But I do think Donnarumma, could he have done better or was it too powerful? Hey, it looks like he takes his hand back. Sometimes these goalkeeper animations, they are weird. Gideon over to Edwards. Edwards has been a struggle to stop. Neto tries to get past me there. Man, this defense is incredible. Marcus Rashford. Yes, Marcus. Come on then. Show me what you got. I wonder what he's going to do with Manchester United in the upcoming season. If he's going to be much better than he used to be. Ritza, incredible move. Takes out two players with one move, but the referee's like, yeah, no. Yes, no. Good header inside. Dominguez with the bicycle kick. Olano with the back heel. Here goes Talis Magno. Yes, Talis Magno. I love that. Across to Marco Grul. He hits the post. Ritza with the bounce. The rebound, I should say. Grul again. And it's Donnarumma this time. PSG is struggling against this team. Since everyone is like 90 plus rated, this squad is very, very strong. Having said that, Bubaka Kamara making his way. Edwards. Ed this guy is a problem. Problem child. He's, he's Jake Paul. I can't stop him. Let's move. Now we have Ruta making a run down to the right. That opens up the space for me in the center. Olaru is doing great. Sees Grul on the far side. Gru sees the space opening up in front of him. Goes for it again. <sighs> I'm just as angry as he is. That should have gone in. Tales Magno down the wing now. Tales Magno has two people chasing him. He needs to go back all the way back into the center. Dominguez. Bang. Oh, Donnarumma. Just let me score. That's beautiful. Whoa, mate. That was so beautiful. Unreal. Let me see that again. That could have been one of the sickest goals I've scored on FIFA 22. Ah, uh, Donnarumma. Why are you like eight inches, eight foot tall? Not eight inches. Eight inches would be weird. He's very small then. Go on. Ah, lucky. Solid tackle. Dallas Magno sees Rashford on the other side. Rashford passes it across to Cherki. Ryan Cherki. Has an option at the far post. Can't find that option. We still have it under control, though. With Dominguez. Dominguez. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Inside. Olaru. El Capitan. He loses it. Ruta wins it back. Straight back into the center. Into the middle. Over to Sales Magno. Yes! Donnarumma beaten for the second time. The Brazilian comes in with a beautiful strike. And lads, I would not be surprised if he only plays for New York City for one season. This kid is extremely talented. And a lot more teams are going to know his name after this year in the MLS. I think in like 10 games, he has like 10 goal contributions or something. This guy is just nuts at the moment. He's the main man for their team. Even though a lot of people thought it would be Castellanos. Wait. Would that have gone against the crossbar and Donnarumma just pushed it into his own goal? Donnarumma is sabotaging. It would just be unfair. Ritter, I'm sorry. Get out of here. Moraes is coming in. I wanted this guy to be my main man. So now in the Champions League final, I got to give him a couple of minutes at least. Inside, can't get it across. Lovely little touch. Olaru down to the right. Cherki is seeing the run of Moraes. Come on, Moraes. This was supposed to be you, not Ritter. Let's go. <laughs> yes, mate. A 79 rated striker is scoring in the Champions League final. PSG is throwing everything into the attack. And that is just a call for counterattacks for us. We run down the right. Cherki gets his assist. And Moraes just shows what could have been. Ritter, I never wanted you. I wanted Moraes, man. I did. It, it, it got all ruined. Ah, uh, anyways. At least at the end of the day. He scored in the Champions League final, and that's all that matters, right? I see a run all the way on the right. Cherki again. Right, what the? <laughs> well, that's a great way to end the game. Let me see them five-star boys lift up the trophy. Guys, this was very enjoyable. If you have any ideas for future rebuilds, let me know in the comments down below. Swansea Tit City has been taken to the top again, and I wish they had their old badge. This one looks trash, but... 
It is what it is. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It was a lot of fun, and this was one of the strongest teams that we have built in the past few weeks. So hats off to Swansea City. Catch you guys next time. Take care and peace.